Hello, you guys. So I just want to make sure if you guys are seeing me okay and hear me okay. So it's Angelica here. And today I'm going to show you guys how to do string beads. And I had guarantee it's cheaper than what you buy um, in the store. But um, because the way I see it, if you make them yourself, you could do, you know, a whole bunch of things in order, I mean, like, instead of what they have in the store, um, because if you do it yourself, you could mix beads and other stuff. And, yeah, so let's get started. So I'm going to... Uh, show you what I have here. So the string, I got this string from Walmart actually. And this is like fishing, fishing string, Fish, uh, yeah. The, this one is called Trilin Extra Large Smooth Casting. And this one is, it has really, it's really sturdy, and I've been using this for a while. And, um, but this is not the stiff type. There are other ones that's more stiff. Okay, and they're thicker. But this one, the, I got this one because it's so long. This one is like 330 yards and, or 301 meters. So I want to finish using this before I buy a new one. And I just don't want to waste money because this does, if I remember correctly, this costs like maybe $10 or something. Um, I'm, I can't remember, but it's not cheap. But anyways, uh, what you could do, so I have this one. That's one of the line. And there's another one, which is these... Um, floral strings these are the metal ones and they're bendable and stuff and they're really really good for yeah for floral for like um if you do a lot of beadworks uh and jewelry wrap sorry jewelry wrapping uh this is also great for that it's multiple use so uh, this one is, let me see, this is 34 gauge, gouge, whatever you, you say that, I have no idea, but it's 34, and it has 30, uh, 24 yards in here. So um, let's start with just the simple, just the simple uh, fishing line. Okay, so, okay, perfect, Michelle, it's wonderful. Thanks for letting me know. So what you do, uh, usually what I do, I usually feed in like, you know, the amount of, so I have these beads here and they're super, super pretty. This one is the Sawasi beads. They're the rondel, the sitted rondel. These are really expensive. So, um, and I also have these ones. That's the square ones, and they are very pretty too. And they have they're kind of beveled, beveled. I think that's what you call it, beveled. And I'll use some of that. I'll do, I'll put five of that, and then I want to put some pearls as well. These ones, okay, I'll show you. I got them all mixed. Like when I pulled them out, they just like went to the other side and to the other side. But anyways, these are dual tone uh, beads, as you can see, and they are very extremely pretty. So since I'm going to be using this 
turquoise, oops, this turquoise one, I'm going to use the turquoise and pink. And so I'm going to put that in the middle of, in between each of the squared ones. Okay. You should always have this lined up so you know what to, I mean, no, you, I mean like, um, so you're organized and you know what you want on your string bead. So what you want to do, you want to string them all together in one go before you start gluing it. Okay. And actually the main reason why I have the bead ripper on, on my list there is because sometimes you get beads, like a lot of times, like especially for um, acrylic beads, the non-natural beads, uh, when they're poured through the through the machine or whatever when they made the bead it sometimes the hole is too small uh, for your string or sometimes they actually accidentally have a hole in one side and it the the color they poured it over the hole on the other side so it's a good idea to have the bead ripper or you don't have actually you don't have to have the bead ripper you could have like something like let me see this like the uh what you will call paper piercer you could do that too but it has to be super thin um just enough to poke it all the way poke it through the you know and then you twirl it and then just make sure that it's the hole is big enough for your um, for your string but the good thing about the bead ripper it could make the hole larger as well is because it has like diamond it's there di I don't know if you could see it. it's diamond cut it's uh yeah it's diamond cut so it pretty much could could make a larger hole on any type of beads so now i have all this strung all together and now i want to you know what another idea another thing is you must have like a paper clip on one on the other end the open end of the string because you don't want your beads falling out when you are trying to uh, when you're trying to glue your stuff and then you know I hate when that happens when the bead starts to fall out the other end or actually you know what you could use like a tape use any tape and I put a tape over it, like kind of loop, loop this, I don't know. <laughs> I think my thing is too light and you can't see it. Hold on. Uh, so, oh, okay, you, you won't be able to see this, but anyways, you have to loop the ends and then tape it. Tape the loop so the bead won't go sliding off to the end. So now, you want to spread out your bead and see where you want to start gluing. And some people I know like are very picky on the spacing of the bead. But for me, I like it like, you know, random. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. And... 
So let's see here. So I want it like kind of like that. But give yourself some space because you're going to be um, gluing them and sliding it towards the glue. So you want to put the glue, oops, my glue is like, uh, let me get my tissue paper here. Actually, no, I'm going to use my baby wipe. Okay. So you want to put your, you know what, I'm going to use my other paper that I don't use and put it under here because I don't want my cardstock to, cardstock to have glue on it, on it. Okay, so sorry, let's start over again. Um, I'm going to space all this out. Okay. And make sure your craft surface is like, uh, it's protected. Okay, so you want to put the glue just in front of the bead. Okay, and, oh, hi, Hazel. Okay, well, I didn't know uh, you could use the dental floss for it. Yep, just use whatever um, it, whatever you have. You don't have to actually go buy specific stuff just for it. Um, whatever is good for you. So what you do, yeah, the, actually the reason why I say glossy accent, I tried a lot of uh, beading glue and stuff. They don't dry as fast and I'm the type of person like especially with something like this I want it to dry fast uh, and so yeah that's just me so um, and then it ha it holds a really really it it does a really good hold on on uh, any type of uh, metal or plastic or um, even glass and stuff so what you do sorry I got off track so you have you should put like a dab of glue just on the fishing line and then feed your your uh, bead right into the glue okay and then not too much if you put too much glue it will um, like especially glossy accent, it will give it like a little matte kind of, yeah, it will make it kind of matted on one side. So what you could do, just put a tiny dab of glossy accent. Doesn't have to be a lot. Okay, and then just slide it. Uh oh, this one. There we go. And then it's better to do it actually, you know what? I'm suggesting because sometimes I when I do this, um my bead it goes like back and forth. What you could do is like buy one of those non-slip, uh, what's that called? Non-slip mat. And because I'm working on like just regular cards un under here, it's going to, it's, uh, I can't talk today. I don't know why. But anyways, <laughs> this is just a regular card stop. But if you use like a non-slip mat, you're your bead will not move okay so it makes life easier if your bead doesn't move like you don't 
want your bead like all over the place uh, when it dries. And you have to be very careful with the uh, glossy accent. It, when you put too much, it will also drip to, I mean, drips down to the paper. But yeah, it takes, it doesn't take that long to dry um, for the glossy accent. Like if you use any other glue, I could guarantee that you have to wait maybe like, oh, 24 hours for it to cure, but not for glossy accent. I just love it so much. And it was actually um, Frank who got me into glossy accent. And I was actually, I didn't know how great it was until I tried um, putting metal stuff and a lot of, you know, metal and plastic embellishment on my projects and that was like and there's one time that i did my uh what's that called my swap for for stick pins and stuff and i tried a whole bunch of glue like i like i i'm the type of person that likes to buy glues because i do a lot of different projects right and i realized even the bead type of type of glue, it doesn't work as well as the glossy accent. I just love it. I swear, like, it, and this glossy accent, I had it for, oh, I don't know, maybe half a year? Is it half a year? And I still have tons. I still have half a bottle. Look at that, it's still half a bottle. And it's like, it seems like it's never ending. I don't, I mean, like, it's like unlimited. And it's so worth it for the money. So I'm just gonna show you now. Look, it's it's already my my bead is already intact with the string. How great is that, right? Especially when you want to do a card quickly and stuff. And so I'm gonna set this aside now. You know how to make the one with the uh, fishing line. Or you could use your dental floss for that, Michelle. Okay, and then that is the easy one. And let me put this aside for a minute. So I'm not gonna uh, do the glue on all, like all, like all, on all the beads. So I'm gonna do the wire now, the metal wire. Oh, no. Oh, no. How come my thing says it's... Could you guys still see me? For some odd reason, I was... I'm looking at my... Uh, my website here. I'm not sure why it says it's... It has errors. Could you guys still could you guys still see me? Michelle, Hazel, could you guys still see me? Oh, weird. How come the thing? Okay. Well, anyways, um, since you guys could still see me, I'll just continue on. Um, so this wire here, it's super thin. And what you could do, there's a whole bunch of things that you could do with it. Um, this you could... 
also do it as I as I showed you with the V, just like string them and then glue them. But there's another thing that you could do is you could, I'm just gonna use this acrylic bead. And okay, so see see right here. I don't know if you could see this bead here. It's the hole is not big enough. Okay, so this is the reason why I say um, to have a bead ripper. So now I just use my bead ripper and turn twirl it, and now it's gonna the hole is gonna be big enough. Okay, there we go. And so for this one, you don't want to put everything all at once, okay? Uh, but you want to know how long of a string bead you want. So you string your your wire through the bead, and then you loop it around and back into the first hole, the top hole that you started with. And string it back into that hole, and that will make it a knot at the back of the bead. I don't know if you could see it, but um, I will see if I could find a card stop here to show you if you could see that area where I. Uh, you can't see that. Hold on. Maybe I'll use my hands. And oh, here I'll use my tweezer and hold it, and so you could see better. Oh, see like, oops. Oh, uh, where's my camera thing? Oh. If it focuses. Oh. Uh, it's not focusing. Oh, there. Did you see it now? Now the string is like, like on the, on one half of the bead because you string the bead so you string the bead this way, and then you go back and string it again this way, okay? So I hope you guys got that, and that's the second method that you could string your bead without having to glue it, which is awesome because, like, you know, glue is expensive. I mean, like, glossy accent is expensive. Um, oh, and for... Okay, no problem, you guys. Um, so what, Michelle, what, what you could do, because you said you are using the uh, dental floss, you could do it this way, and um, you could put a knot at the end, on the end, and then on both ends, just to make sure it doesn't move, because I know dental floss, they're pretty, um, they slide pretty easily. And uh, yeah, you could try that and see if that works. If that works, let me know because I have never tried that before. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of the thing that I liked about uh, using these wires because you don't even need to like you know look. I have these these butterfly animal beads that you can't find in the market. <laughs> I got this from the wholesaler. But um, I don't know if they discontinued it, but I bought a whole bunch of them when, when I saw it. I was like, oh my God, I'm so getting these, right? But yeah, so see the good thing about having 
to string your own bead is because you could do whatever you want. I mean, you could put any type of bead you want. And um, so yeah, I'm just gonna string this through the same way, like, you know, string it like so. Now see, you have two beads all together, like so. And then you could put another one of the same one or a different one if you like. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm gonna see if I, oh, oh. I think I chose a super large um, gold bead that I don't have a second or third one of with going Angelica. Okay, anyhow. I'll probably take that out after the show, <laughs> and then I'll uh, string other beads. Anyways, I'll just um, put another bead on here just to show you how awesome this is. So you poke it through one end, and then you loop it back, back to the uh, first hole and loop it back down and tighten it and make sure you hold the bead and uh, not move it and because if you move the bead too far and then you string it too far if you don't like it you could still go back with a with your tweezer because this metal string is very very thin and it's meant for you know to do a lot of um twisting and twirling you could still go back and tighten it to the closer i mean there we go see how nice that is Okay, and you could do that all the way through, but you know what? If you want to have like you know, um, super long, uh, like you know, super long bead string. I haven't seriously. I haven't done a super long bead strings because usually I just do it just like really really short ones. Oh, sorry. Anyways, really, really short ones, like maybe um, like a 12 inch or max is like 18 inch um, bead string because I usually don't, um, I don't do much of the self-made bead strings because it takes, well, it doesn't take that much, that long to do it, but yeah, sometimes I get lazy and then I have a whole bunch of stuff to do and then I have no time to do this. So, um, but for those of you that has a lot of time or uh, you don't want to buy the string beads because they're quite expensive. And if you want to be different and do like different different beads like, like this, then it's a great way to do it yourself like that. Oh, hi, Kim. How are you? Yeah, this, uh, Kim, um, I use this wire and this wire is actually really super thin. It's 34, I think you guys call it gouge or gauge. I don't know how you say it, but um, yeah, tw a 34 G-A-U-G-E. And it's really, really super easy because you just loop it through one end, so you loop it through one end, it comes out this way, and then you loop it back into the first hole and then back. And that will get you, that will tighten it. Or, yeah, I showed earlier about the, the, this one that you can glue it. And, but you have to, you should beat it, beat all of them first, and then you put the glue in front there and then kind of push your, your bead to the front so it 
the glue is intact with the bead and I use only the glossy accent because it dries super fast and look at it. I could use it now, see? It's not like other glue that like you have to wait like 24 hours or 48 hours to, for, for it to cure. So yeah, I hope you guys uh, learned something today. Uh, it's really, it is really, really super simple. Um, yeah, I didn't think that it would take an hour anyways, but if you guys have any questions in regard to th this, just let me know. Do you guys have any questions? That's awesome, Kim. Yeah, there's a lot of wires out there that you could use, but it's just a matter of, um, especially when you loop it like this, uh, like, you know, without having to use glue, if you loop it, you must buy a string that is thin enough to loop it twice in and out. So, yeah, thick, really thick, um metal wires won't like it won't go through because i tried <laughs> learned from experience yeah it is super cool and you know what these oh and also i want to show you guys this uh this wire i don't know if you guys heard of um fiber optics wire have you guys heard of it? Okay, so anyhow, this this is super thick wire. Like you could literally see it. Unlike this, this fishing line wire is super, super thin. You could barely, barely see it, right? Like, hold on. Like, look at that. You can't, like, the other one, you can barely see it, okay? But the super, I mean, super, the fiber optic um, wire, the purpose for it, you know, sometimes you see, like, um, I don't know, like, a long time ago, they they sell these uh, glow-in-the-dark kind of light things, string lights. That is what these are, the fiber optic uh, wires and what you could do with these um, you could string especially the beads that has that's kind of transparent like you know like these and then so like these or even I have like this bead it's it's natural stone. It's called C. Opel. These are super pretty. It gives off, like it's a natural stone, right? And it gives off like a rainbow color. So if you put this and glue this onto this fiber optic, and on the other end, like if you have like tons of these strings and then you put them like, you know, kind of like a waterfall or something, and you put the other end on like, um, black light or like a fluorescent light I believe it will give uh, this bead will glow it's like unbelievable it's like so so pretty but yeah these fiber I could I could tell you this it's very this this wire is super expensive and I think I got this I don't know how many feet was it? It's 70, 75 feet. And I, if I remember correctly, is like 30, I think $30. 75 feet for $30. Something like that. But yeah. Well, because it's kind of cool. So, <laughs> oh, they're made from like special fibers and, and stuff. That's why it's kind of expensive.
yeah the fishing line is awesome that's what I always use and you know what I got this one and it's like it's like 330 yards like I still I'm still using this and it's how many years now and it's still like you know it's I, I can't it doesn't seem like it's it's ever gonna be done I don't know because maybe because I I barely use this fishing line thing to do my beading because I'm too lazy and I use the pre-made um, <laughs> the pre-made uh, you know string beads instead of uh, doing my own but anyhow that's <laughs> yeah that's what um, they do see like I kind of pushed it before it dries it completely dries and now it's this one because I only glued four of them right so this one is I think these three it's completely dry so when I push it it's not doing it's not moving at all but the last one I think it wasn't completely dry and I pushed it and it start to move so yeah it's a good idea to let it dry maybe like two hours but you know, it's better than waiting for like a whole day. And you could pre-make this and make life easier for yourself. And um, you could also make it like, you know, like these ones, hold on. I like these ones, oh, hold on. These are pre-made ones, right? So you, I guess you could, do all your strings like that like you know beat it like very closely but um yeah only if you want it to but I kind of like the effect that it's a little be a little bit spaced out and it looks kind of more wedding-ish Oh, where can I, when can you get the, you mean like the fiber optic one, Hazel? Oh, yeah, Michelle, yeah. You must get the glossy accent. Trust me, it's worth every bit of your money to get the glossy accent. I totally recommend it um, over other glue if you want to do beading or, um, putting on metal metal stuff it's super awesome oh really Kim but doesn't the fishing line because of the fishing line is like so soft and it's movable does doesn't it move or do you like make a knot on the end on both end of it? Is that what you do? Hi, Lee. Oh, so Lee, <laughs> this actually, this show is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty super easy. And I just finished kind of, yeah. So what I did was, uh, I glued this and cut, well, I, I put all the beads together and then glue this and then, oh, well, space it out and then glue them with glossy accent and then using the wire one to loop it. And so you don't have to use, use glue. Yeah, the, the one that glows, but it doesn't glow by itself. You have to put like a light source at the end of the string and then it will shine through. Hold on, where did I put that? My fiber optic, oh, right here. Okay, so this one, right? I got this, you know what? 
I have to get back to you on that because I forgot where I got this. Um, I'll have to check my inventory book where I got it. And I will get back to you and let you know, Hazel, on that. Oh, wrap it twice? Oh, I should try that. That's a great idea, I mean, Kim. Um, I shall try that. Actually, you know what? Since I'm, since I'm here, I'm just going to go. I'm going to try. Try it the way you said. So, loop it twice, right, you said? Let's try that. You know, at least we all know. So, well, since my, um, my thing is really thin, my... I bought the super thin, uh, super thin wire. Oh, that works too. But I think you double it is better. That is so awesome. Look at that. Thank you, Leah, for, I mean, uh, sorry, Kim, for letting us know. See? Kim was telling us that you can use this fishing line to loop it twice. And then now, look at that. You don't even need glue. How simple is that? But make sure, I, I think you have to make sure that you pull it tight when you use the, uh, when you use the fishing line. But I think it's better if you buy a thin fishing line, not the, not too thick, so you could loop it two times over the beads. Oh no, Lee! What happened? Oh, hope you'll feel better soon. Take care. Yeah, you can watch back to this to this video later on um, on how I explained how to do it and then kind of showed you. So do you guys have any further questions in regards to this? Like, I think it's super cool. And look at this, you guys. I I got this super nice, like, bead. And it's it looks like it's 3D. It's like, it looks like it's in an aquarium. I don't know if you can see it. It's so pretty. I just love it. And this is, yeah, this is a bead. And I could definitely string this. And I don't think they sell this bead because this is like the handmade type of bead that. Ooh. Oh, I love this. Look at this, you guys. Oh. It's like kind of transparent. It's like so pretty. I know, right? Oh, you're doing crochet stuff? That's awesome. I love your crochet stuff, Hazel. You have you do a lot of crochets, right? Hazel, I think you're like me. You're like an all-rounder. You do beads, and then you crochet, and then you do scrapbook and crafting, too. Do you guys do the same, too? Lee and Kim? I think it's super fun to learn different type of um, crafts because sometimes you could use like each craft. I mean, like all the crafts could 
just be combined together. Like even sometimes when I do like mini books and stuff, and then my beading and te- my beading techniques and stuff will just um, go into making the bling and stuff for my mini books, which is awesome. Like just learning how to do different type of craft just is just awesome. You could just sometimes apply it to this and you could apply it to another craft project. But yeah. Yeah, sometimes learning different techniques, you could actually, um, doing different techniques could make you think of stuff that you don't usually think of. Um, it Sometimes, I don't know, it's just, it gives me a lot of different ideas when I learn a whole bunch of stuff and then see a whole bunch of things. That's why I don't limit myself to just um, watching YouTube videos, I go out and see the nature, see flowers, animals, and sometimes it's just some things that just make you click just like that, um, just by looking at something, you know, um, or even just simply just going out and watching people do shows and sometimes I don't know just I gain a lot of experience from different um, stuff it's just real life stuff not just YouTube and internet because it's kind of well it's not limited but it's internet is kind of cool it's because you get to see a lot of uh, people doing different things and you get inspired for doing uh, for other people's work and sometimes you gain a lot of interesting ideas from other people's work and not necessarily the same but it just gives you that kick to getting started Oh, wow, cool. See, look at you guys. You guys know how to do a lot of stuff, too. That's just awesome. I know, right? Being a multitasker is just awesome because you learn a lot of stuff instead of limiting yourself to do just one thing, right? Actually, you know what? Knitting isn't that hard. Actually, it's much easier. I could tell you knitting is much easier than crocheting. Because crocheting, you have to do counts. Well, you don't have to, but if you remember um, how many counts on how many, I don't know, it's just, yeah, one of those things. Um, I usually buy a counter (laughs) to prevent from myself forgetting um, when I miss a loop or something. Yeah. Oh, really? You do a lot of art journal? Yeah, I did. I see some of your stuff, Kim. It's so awesome. I love your journaling. Okay, you know, ladies, I'm just going to um, 
end the recording, um, but we could still keep talking on the chat. And I'll be on the chat with you guys, and we could just chat there, okay? Okay, so for those who are record, uh, uh, who's watching the recording, I hope you are gaining some tips and techniques and learn to do your beating yourself. And yeah, if you want to do different stuff on this, instead of buying just the plain old bead all the way through, um, yeah, that's it, okay? See you guys later. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Thanks so much. Bye. Oh, good night, Lee. Bye.